Hey everybody, welcome to the NVIDIA Omniverse live stream. As you can see, we have an amazing group of people here with us today. Um, we have uh, uh, John Martin uh, from Real Illusion. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We've got my, my partner in crime here, Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, how's it going? Omniverse ambassador from the community. We have Christopher Scott. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. And last but most certainly not least uh, is Markom 3D, who is, I'm sure, going to bless us with some dad jokes along the way. Hey, Marco. <laughs> Hey, did you did you know a man in boxes led belief in a brief chase? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. So, <laughs> today we're going to cover some uh, equally amazing things. Uh, uh, Real illusion, uh, John. I have to say, we we talked about this in our warm up the other day, uh, but I have been blown away by the level of activity from Real Illusion's team lately. Um, you guys are always providing great updates, but lately you've been adding some pretty significant free features on top of uh, your software, like iClone, and with this, what we're going to talk about today, uh, a crowd sim. Um, one of the first things that uh, 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 that um, was said back to me after I spoke to someone, uh, a user, uh, they said, "Oh man, how expensive is?" I was like, "It's, it's free. It comes it's just an added, added feature." So, John, thanks so much for calling me. Do you want to? Uh, let's dive into, uh, and um, I'm going to hit announcements a little in a little bit. Uh, but first, let's dive into uh, kind of what CrowdSim is and uh, and how people can get a hold of it if they're not already using iClone. Right. Well, um, uh, you you definitely want to uh, enjoy the world of iClone um, and and all of its connection capabilities to the world of Omniverse. Um, it, we make everything you create in iClone. If it's your first time experiencing it or hearing about it, um, it's it's a super highway right to Omniverse to um, get that beautiful uh, you know path trace rendering and all of the other uh, toys. So uh, saying that, I I will say that. Also with uh, with CrowdSim, this really takes all the culmination of things that that Reillusion touches with characters and and animation and real time and interactive, and it puts it all kind of in one really awesome tool for CrowdGen. Um, many times we've we've been uh, for a long time working on. Um, as a company, uh, the character performance, the individual performance, and letting someone really enhance that capability down to even something we call digital soul and um accuface which we we've recently covered with you guys and talking about um certainly all of the benefits that we've had with our projects and development with with nvidia that has you know, put superchargers on that um it's a wonderful um facial animation tool and uh, it's a it's a great demonstration of the combined forces of um, brilliant NVIDIA technology and people that we get to work with. And then also, um, you know, what we bring from our world with characters and, and animation um, with CrowdSim, we bring it all together. And what we allow for is a way to plot multiple characters and their behaviors in environments, in interiors, in exteriors, and actually be able to control not only um, characters walking this way, characters walking that way, characters mulling around in a room, but really the attitude of the character, the persona, um, if you will, and the behavior, the social interaction on the street, the avoidance of people as you pass them by. All of these things are really smart tools that are part of CrowdSim now that instantly benefit those that want to um, take take this uh, content into Omniverse. And, um, you know, coupling that with our tools like Actor Core that gives you an instant ability to uh, pro or access characters on micro purchase or on big character pack levels, uh, whatever your needs may be. Plus, with motions being the same thing, Reillusion, we've we've tried to touch a lot of areas that allow for characters to be um, a technology and then also the ingredients that you need in order to to really feel a crowd solution whether it's stadiums or city streets or art galleries or whatever you may need so touches media and entertainment touches um you know aeco certainly gives it gives a um, an opportunity for i think a lot of industry to again uh, harness the power of characters without having to have been a character artist or animator um so 
Definitely. Wow. This has been this has been actually a, a pretty long term a struggle with uh, creators and developers, right? Um, uh, and I should say, Vince, uh, Vince, who uh, who uh, I used to work very close to, it, still work with, but not as close anymore. It's <laughs> awesome to have you back here. I got to say that out loud. Um, yeah. uh, so, Vince, now your role has kind of shifted a little bit, and why don't you tell us kind of why uh, why you're here joining us? Yeah, so I moved into developer relations, uh, which you know was uh, for media and entertainment, and and it's you know there's there's been these great companies forever, you know the Autodesks and Adobe's and and Reillusion um, for a long time that that have these have these mature products and actually real has been keeping me so busy with all of these new products like every week there's like a new thing a new thing a new thing uh it's been just phenomenal to see and it's such a great addition to anyone's pipeline and so um yeah i've, I've moved into developer relations we're looking at a lot of different companies that are just propping out of everywhere now doing generative ai and all sorts of cool things it's pretty early days for 3d on uh, generative AI, but uh, you know, platforms like Omniverse help that, and tools like like uh, like like the ones provided by Reillusion really kind of give you that basis. Right? One of the the one of the use cases for for this is that that kind of piqued my curiosity as well. I have you know I have friends that have dedicated years of their lives just to do crowd simulation for for feature films. Right? It's just these these it's so it's been so difficult for ages. And this just becomes instantaneously easy. We were just talking to a company that's doing um, uh, surveillance, or even to to help people in you know think of a um, the um, the parking lot of a hospital. You know, having cameras out there, being able to identify people that need help, that 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 need a wheelchair, that might need a gurney. You know, having you know the one of the things that John said about the 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 full package. It's not just about animating characters, but having those motions, having elderly and young and all of that data to go with it. And so we have companies looking at doing synthetic data generation using this yes. tool, right? Generating that data to train neural networks to detect people from one camera to the next, things like that. It's hugely important, right? We always kind of think about media and entertainment, but um, there's so many use cases for this in robotics and, and, and AI. So yeah, I moved into DevRel to you know, help uh, explore those venues, bridging customers that have in, intricate needs with with our partners building these cool uh, products. Oh, you're muted, Edmar. Sorry, thank you. That's a great <laughs> way to talk about what's coming up soon. Let me fix this banner here. Um, GTC is coming up and uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of content there, uh, uh, especially focused on on AI. Um, and we're going to have a lot of companies there, a lot of partners, a lot of developers from the team are there. The sessions are, are live uh, on the website, nvidia.com says GTC. It's on the screen. Uh, Vince, you will definitely be there, of course. Uh, Absolutely. I think, John, John, you told me you, you'll probably be heading there. Awesome. So that's great. Chris Scott will be there. Chris, you're actually presenting at GTC. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Richard will be there. Almost everyone will be here except for Marco. Marco's the the soul man out, but he he just yeah. he just kind of went to see Graph Asia, so he has a he has a good pass. We'll so, bring tell us tell us about that. Yeah, how was he Graph? He he only got to go to the tail end, right? Yes, only the tail end. Um, but I met like some really interesting people, just kind of like going up to random people in the lobby. Um, I don't think they're used to people approaching them, uh, but it's like, hey, Marco, what do you do? And we just, I met so many interesting people from a professor from, um, from Sweden to one of the developers for mid journey. It was, it was a wide spectrum of people. It was great. Yeah. I have to say, I think that's one of the, the hugest benefits of going to any of these conferences, including GTC coming up in March is the ability to network, uh, with other people in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. and also, uh, for people who go ahead to GTC, if you, if you're going, uh, uh, shoot us a note on discord or on the forums, let us know you're going, if you're interested in, in us helping to uh, set up some meetings, we'd love to meet with uh, as many people as we can out there and help you with whatever kind of work you're doing. Um, and, uh, and, and provide introductions to different members of our team who might be able to help. Um, it should be a lot of fun. So, um, March 18th, 21st, uh, it's going to be coming up quick. Um, and then if you are, well, I have the slides open. If you, uh, if you have any cool content for winter theme, you want to share, uh, mm -hmm. share with the world, go ahead and uh, use the hashtag winter art challenge. Uh, do a search for that now and you'll see some really cool stuff. We'll know to do it now. Wait till after the live stream, but search for winter art challenge. You'll see some really cool stuff. Um, 
uh, we have the latest uh, episode that was just uh, put to the pl video playlist on YouTube from Aaron Luck on the Universal Scene Description, the learning series. It's an amazing series with nice bite-sized videos, uh, good information for uh, veterans and newbies alike to USD. Um, you really be uh, uh, compelled on uh, leveraging USD once you get through some of these videos. You'll see why. And then the uh, Isaac Sim office hours are now in full swing. Uh, they just had their first one uh, yesterday of 2024. And uh, next week, the Ross team will be back on Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. So I hope uh, people who are doing any kind of Isaac robotic work, you should check that out. It's a great place to talk to the devs. Okay, so back to uh, back to CrowdSim. Um, and uh, Vince, you were saying before the warm up, one of the other great things that we really need to highlight is kind of what goes hand in hand with CrowdSim and, and Active Core stuff, right? Yeah, Active Core. I mean, the assets. It's just, it's amazing. Like, there's a lot of of um, motion um, libraries out there. There's not that many, but there's a few. But the thing about the uh, Reillusion one, if you haven't looked at it in a while, go back to Active Core. And they, uh, as they put out this the um, the CrowdSim, they also came up with this these packages, right? Which makes tons of sense. You're not going to go piecemeal necessarily characters, but if you look at the packages, the complexity of these things is amazing. It's just like people in museums or business or uh, casual or walking or in a park or riding bikes or getting in and out of cars was really Im uh, uh, impressive to me because like getting in and out of vehicles and having the feet leave the ground has always been a challenging thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so having these packs uh, and then um, the also having that convenient little, little icon that shows you there's variance to it because uh, you don't want that same one person in a business suit walking down the street 18 times, right? So having that ability to 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 have those variants, it, you know, it's it, it's amazing. And and uh, you know, without having this massive library of characters and motions, um, you know, a crowd system is pointless. And so it's really nice to see a company that does both, that has everything, that has this breadth. And then if something's missing, you have iClone, you have Character Creator, you have all of these other tools to just go ahead and 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 create that hero actor and bring it in. So, you know, it's re really, really impressive portfolio of tools. Speaking of impressive, so along those lines, we actually got a nice video from another Omniverse ambassador, uh, mm -hmm. Pekka Varis, uh, who just uh, spent yeah. a little time working on the crowd sim and was able to put this together for us. This is a, a nice uh, short little minute video. I'll play it for everybody. We'll get right back. Beautiful work. Nice really? going, Pekka. Uh, Pekka wanted to join us today, but he's uh, re recovering from uh, a, a small uh, procedure on his eye. Everything's fine, uh, but he couldn't make it, but wishes us well and put that together for uh, us earlier this morning. So uh, he did want to add, though, he said uh, he said it was crazy how fast everything rendered uh, with Composer. Um, so yeah. uh, so very thanks, uh, very big thanks, Pekka, for putting that together. Um, yeah, so it seems like the, these, so John, what are you seeing in terms of the, uh, the users currently that are, are first to jump on leveraging CrowdSim or is it, is it uh, professionals who need to add more realism to their scenes, whether architects or are you seeing people in media and entertainment or, uh, uh other type of creators? I'm seeing both actually. It's, it's, it's nice. The uptick of interest in both sides of things, um, especially like um, for, but both have 
unique kind of needs, I think. I think for media and entertainment, it's about streamlining something that is very well known, d- deeply rooted in, in, you know, kind of standards. Um, and it's a wonderful time to be, uh, you know, revamping what those are because things are popping and changing constantly. And mm-hmm. in, in, in these times with generative AI and everything else, always great tool sets. Um, but um, with um, with the use uh, case over in um uh, like AEC, um, it's it's something more that you're dealing with a lot of times folks that are um, not entering the world from this discipline so much. It's about the need. It's about the need to fill a room. It's about the need to create visualization. And so these tools, I think, are, have been, um, you know, part and parcel to um letting them leverage those designs and 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 create those visualizations i think more rapidly in house um with you know with the tools with the characters with the motions and so on so um you know media and entertainment i think it's something that we you know we certainly aim to provide other industry tool sets with but content as well that, that can advance, advance that yeah what what was that chris Sorry, I have two heads. I have an, oh. another chat came in through my head, and they're <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and look, that, this is this is one of the reasons why Chris can stay so active and doing different different things. Always I love it. Yes. Well, it wasn't. I thought I closed Discord. Oh. Uh-huh. And Discord, then somebody Discord jumped in my closed. room. Yeah, yeah I don't it know never works at the Discord. same time. So I was, thought I was unclear. I'm so sorry, John. No, no, no. No I'm, worries. No worries. So, so I think it's on both levels. Is, uh, since I'm yeah. here, let me add exactly to what John's saying yeah. for ACO. It's like, for Please. the most part, architects, as much as like they're skilled, they're only skilled in a discipline that they're doing. And then whether you're, and John hasn't really talked on this yet, which is like wherever you're putting it. Like, so if you're in the Middle East, they want to see people from the middle east you want to see people that you're relating to and that you're putting into the scene that that's matching that lifestyle and so and vince was also saying um for like elderly people like i don't think i've ever seen elderly people before like represented and there's tons like we just did the veterans affair hospital and like that's a part of it and because because different people are from everywhere architects no offense to a lot of architects, like they want to get the job done. They want to demonstrate their product as, as best as possible and being able to like, just click on a few things and bring in as many people as possible and simulate them. Uh, that's fantastic. And then also like, you know, and then the other medium is virtual production is going to become even bigger in the future and having those people in the background um, being able to even, I I don't know if there's a lot of things, but just even training AI for the background so you can start bringing crowd simulations for base people. And I've seen it where they're trying to retrain people so it looks even better. And then they're overlaying the regular crowd simulation people with more. Have you seen that, John? Yes, I have. It's 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 impressive. And I think there's more and more of that, certainly in visual effects and, and elsewhere that's 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 continuing. And it's, you know, creates a massive amount um, of folks on screen. So I'm I'm uh, I'm certainly encouraged um, by, you know, what this does is allows, I think, that process to start a lot faster, maybe even. Uh, in terms of production, like maybe you're in even in pre-production side of things when you're starting to just put together more advanced animatics and visualizations um, that can show when you get like models and and uh, concepts and things together. Um, certainly on the on the, um, you know, AECO side, it's it's it, it's about streamlining something that otherwise maybe just was like, we're, we, you know, that's not part of what we're doing right now. It's, it's definitely something that you can put attention to and uh, tools that are dedicated for it that adapt to your, your designs as well, including with, you know, stairs and so on. So um, I think it's, it's, it's cool how it's adaptable to the type of use case that you need to, uh, to develop. And even if it's uh, background, mid ground characters and virtual production, Absolutely. Um, this certainly fills uh, that. And then with the advancement of what Reillusion has um, going is that we will provide, um, you know, like genre based motion packs that would be smart with characters and accessories and so on that will give you something that truly lets you say, OK, I'm making this type of film 
or this type of animation or visualization or whatever. And I want these types of behaviors. Now, it might be general human. It might be, um, say, motion um uh, motion challenged or, you know, um, uh, obstructed. And that could be everything from dragging luggage to having three children by your side. It's not, you know, like it's, it's not just wheelchairs, but that's also something as well. So we've tried to take that in and we've had the opportunity to listen to a lot of people who are really outside of our industry that are having needs for motion. And it's, it's, re it's really refreshing hearing what all of these, these exact needs are and how they arise. So it's, it's, a uh, rapidly hopefully being solved in, in those areas and then it's something we can all use yeah from from my perspective i i've done a lot of architect renderings over the years and i will say that um things are just getting better and better thanks to your technology because you know 20 years ago architects i would do renderings and not put people in and a lot of people did the same thing they would you would see miles and miles and miles of empty buildings and yeah. the client would always ask where are the people then you'd say, uh, people are too difficult, you know, like I can take your Revit renderings. I can take your, your AutoCAD renderings, but to just add one person, they were very expensive to buy. Mm -hmm. They were static. So they almost threw off the animation a little bit, you know, they, you, they mm -hmm. you're flying through a, through a scene and you have the ceiling fan spinning and the, and the wind blowing, but the people are, are frozen in place. Right. Um, and it's the, it's that uncanny valley where it, it's the opposite end. It's, it's just uh, it's, it, it ruins the rendering. So a lot of people would take them out, and then we went through that period where people would do silhouettes a lot, yeah, because at least it's something, but it's not you know it's not real. And the, and the thing is, now you have technology thanks to you where you can fill a room or or a city with life, mm -hmm. and it sells. Architects are all about selling their their vision and they don't have a lot of time and they don't have a lot of money and they they focus on the building the ec part of it but in terms of people it's 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 a night usually used to be a nightmare for them so you know thanks to that technology we've we're able to fill these renderings with life and awesome. at the end of the day the client's much happier and then the public gets a better version of the vision and the architects don't get the the gray hairs they used to get so that's, that's really fantastic. Good. That's, that's really good. good. Yeah. yeah well, I've, I've been scrolling through the uh, the website for CrowdSim. We put the link in the chat for anyone who missed it earlier. It's there. Um, but a really kind of uh, pretty deep tech you've used here in lots of different areas, including the stairs, uh, but also uh, custom spawning, uh, obstacle avoidance. Um, <laughs> you really did everything you can to make this as true to life as possible. Um, I'm curious. Uh, uh, so for support, uh, I think we've talked about this before, but where do users currently get the best level of support on um, on Discord or the forums? So the forum, um, and um, if it's if it's a true support like ticket they want to open, we have that system that they can go through through our support on our website. Um, otherwise, if you want to discuss um, usage and maybe pipeline and other, you know, meet other people that are doing the same thing. Both. Um, I think the Omniverse discord is a great place, um, to find other folks that are doing that. And then certainly on real illusion, our forum, um, is, is an excellent spot for, for you to go to and, and, uh, you know, talk with other users and maybe share or ask questions. Um, but we have a very robust learning section, um, that we generate lots of video um, tutorials and uh, we're also doing webinars. So definitely check out the learning section on Real Illusion's website and that, um, that would give you access to pretty much everything. So whenever we launch, we, we, we typically come with all the learning tools uh, necessary to onboard and keep you going. Because if you're, if you're using our tools, then you know that they're incredibly modular. And so you have the ability to really, you know, if, if your direction is the needs of crowds, you probably need more character options. You need motion packs. You want to, you know, really work with that and then give you so many different options for you to, to create your crowds with. And, um, you know, Reillusion continues to advance that. There's going to be lots more coming um, within this year that will make this system even more robust. So it's exciting. It's something that I've wanted to see um, see there for quite a while. 
That's awesome. And I, I um, look at the screen right now. What's uh, what's mind blowing is is the compatibility you guys have here with this. Um, uh, obviously, we're you know this is the Omniverse live stream, so great support for Omniverse there. But look at that ecosystem. Um, all all the big boys um, and girls, I should say. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Um, and uh, Marco, you have actually been uh, a big user of Real Illusion stuff for for quite some time. Right? I've noticed you've done a lot of videos on your amazing channel. It's very much just the fact that I can connect it um, to everything else. Like being a heavy Blender user, being a heavy Omniverse user, it's just mm -hmm. like one click, and it's been able to move very freely between the applications. Um, the importing from Blender into iClone or Character Creator has been amazing. Um, even rigging characters, because you guys have the AccuRig tool, throw in a character that hasn't been rigged, you know, give it five minutes and bam, I've rigged a character that's got full mobility and that's automatically connected to the actor core uh, animation set as well. So um, I surprised a few people with that, how quickly I was able to rig a character. <laughs> um, and then using audio to face as well to rig the face with shape keys as well. So there's like all these connections, it's just been magical, just makes my life easier. And I have no intention to learn character creation because there's no point. Because it looks schmick. <laughs> That's a, a good point. And we've got a good question here for John from Data Juggle. Let me throw it on the screen. Um, do you guys have, we talked a little bit about this in the warm up. Um, obviously, some stuff you can't share because still, things are still in motion. But what can you share about what's, uh, what's on the path ahead for a real illusion? Well, I think that pipeline just uh, to expand on this this screen alone is always super important to us and is always going to be a part of where we're advancing and what we're doing. And with characters, um, along with creating a bank of characters that you could quickly deploy inside um, a crowd, of course, we we really work towards uh, the fine tuning of custom characters. Um, and character creator. And so our pipeline with GoZ is going, you're going to see a lot of advancement with that and capabilities with um, the ability to have a little more detail um, in your sculpts. And uh, then also the, uh, the way that uh, you're able to handle uh, the, the look as a WYSIWYG from character creator directly over to ZBrush. So there's a lot of exciting stuff that's going to happen there to help not only someone who's like, oh, I'm ZBrush extraordinaire, which I am not, um, but I'm dangerous enough to open it and work with it. And I'm, you know, happy to do that. And as a, uh, these tools really help me a lot too, especially with the, the masters that use them as well. But um, it, uh, it, it really puts the sculpt in hand with uh, characters uh, even, even, even more intuitively. Um, and uh, so more more tools inside ZBrush panels and such um, that will aid with that. Um, so in terms of crowd sim, definitely more that you will see there in the evolution in um, what's what's capable um, with that and the growth of that. Um, so uh, pipeline um, uh, expansion with control rigs into other areas for support. Um, it's it'll be an exciting time, but you'll also see some uh, some some probably also some um, more AI enabled solutions within this year within our tools um, that will take what you already know as principal animation, but will really make that supercharged. So, um, yeah, there's exciting stuff comes course content. Um, you know, we touched on actor core. Uh, super important place if you're just getting started and you want to have access to certain characters or certain motions that call for like if you have a scene that you're that you're needing um, the search functionality there is is really robust and can get you to that motion set or that uh, character set either on an individual basis or on a whole pack theme basis uh, relatively, um, you know, relatively easy. And of course, like it's been mentioned, you can use character creator to enhance those characters in many cases, or you can, um, use, uh, iClone to further animate them. But, um, you know, packs are, are, uh, you know, organized so that you can quickly get to the content that you need. 
and um, and get get started with working. But it, it covers a lot of different genres, not just not just uh, warriors and and wizards, but uh, also uh, a lot of serious content and casual folks and business mm -hmm. folks as well. That's awesome. And we actually did get a question earlier. Uh, I'm not sure if you know this, John. What skeleton is used in the crowd sim? So it's the default um, that we have with with character creator, but you have some different depending on how you adjust your LODs, you can diminish some things. So um, we have installed inside iClone um, and character creator so you can or character creator so you can change the uh, uh, the LOD that you would export with it. But um, it's uh, it's it's highly controllable so that you're not feeding your crowd sim with like 30,000 poly characters and too many bones. Uh, Vincent, you got anything you want to add on that? Yeah, actually, there's the uh, that light. I think it's called light, light mode. Um, yeah. the, there was a new connector uh, for Omniverse that was released recently for 8.4. And that's kind of the main feature is it adds support for this light mode. And so that's a... a uh, again, kind of thinking of everything someone might need. If you shove 300 characters into your scene, it might start to chug <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, so 8.4 brought in that support, and then the new connector supports it as well, so that you can have that that instant LOD. It's it's really amazing to you know have have regular meetings with the Reillusion team. Every time you're like, "What about this?" and they're like, "Yep, we got that. What about this? Well, we got that too." It's like ah, you're trying to stump them on features that are missing and. They're uh, they're they're definitely uh, very thorough on what they they build. It's been that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so this uh, we we get this question once in a while on our forums too. Well, so I'm going to throw it at you. Um, is there any kind of Mac OS support? Mm. So yeah, it's um, specifically to Accurig. I don't believe so either. Um, it's it's uh, for our tools in general all of our 3d tools it's pc only so uh, let me check on the i know it's it needs that it needs the app so no it's not mac i'm sorry that's okay yeah that's uh um that's you know what obviously with the advent of more cloud support coming uh across the board from everybody it seems like there's going to be a lot of solutions there for mac users uh in the near future too so that's exciting um, let me see. Uh, any more questions? If you have any questions or comments right now, I see Pekka here. Hey, Pekka. Everybody loved your video a minute ago. Yes. Um, Beautiful. If anyone has any questions or comments for Real Illusion, please feel free. Oh, here we go. One from Marlon Romero. Is it possible to change a character's clothes? The characters have UVs that can be painted. Uh, precisely. You're on the money. That is right. You can. And you also have material ID control so that you can do some dynamic changing as well. Um, depending on what you call up, but yes, you can you can change out uh, the character's clothes on um, actor core individually. Um, there are, there are options with the clothing, uh, the coloring uh, for the UV, so you can change like the the dress color or something like that. Uh, if it's a one piece one mesh body scan, um, but there's actor scan and actor build characters on actor core, and so um, some of those like the actor build has a few more features that you can access and actually. Um, do more modular uh, creation with that. So, um, but you can look through the content and, and try those. It's uh, all the supports in the modify panel under our material. Um, so you, you can, you can try. It. Oh, and I think we have another member of the community here. Let me let him in. Toby's here. If we can get the mouse working. Hey, there Hi. you go. Welcome. Hey. Sorry for the hey. delay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm glad you're able to join us. So I was just uh, chatting with Toby earlier on, on the Omniverse Discord server, which uh, I hope everyone out there is a member of, discord.gg slash Omniverse. As John mentioned earlier, uh, it's a vibrant place to interact with other Real Illusion users um, and lots of chatter on open USD development um, on the Omniverse platform and broken down we have lots of lots of channels there. Um, anyway, so I was chatting with Toby earlier um, because I, I was uh, looking for people who might want to show uh, off some workflow in Real Illusion, and Toby said that you, you've been using uh, Real Illusion for a while, but uh, before you tell us about Real Illusion, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us kind of more about who you are? Sure. Uh, so my name is Toby, and that's uh, short for uh, my full name will be Tobias Bauman. I'm originally from Switzerland, 
and I have a little performance capture studio that I run in Switzerland, which is called Quantum Stage. So I do uh, motion and performance capture um, with different technologies. And so basically that's my business. And currently I have a client project where I go, I uh, looked at a bunch of uh, lip sync solutions and did a bunch of evaluations on how is the performance and how is the data handling with those. And so that's why I also contacted the Edmar. That's awesome. Very cool. And I believe you, you got permission to show stuff off. Yeah, I can show a few things. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. So feel free to uh, share your screen. Um, to do that, you just click on present at the bottom and then uh, hit OK in that little message. Then you pick your screen and you can uh, exclude the audio if you want by that little checkbox. And uh, once I see it here, I'll share with everybody else. But so glad you're able to join us. Um, Marco, so you have uh, you have uh, a very active channel. Um, uh, I know that you uh, have, uh, as you mentioned earlier, you worked out with Dave Tyner from our team on some cool projects. What's coming up next for your channel? Uh, so I'm going to do it. Um, building web series this year, mainly focused around uh, two people running a restaurant. Um, and so... I've brought in a writer as well to help me write that out. So that's going to be six three-minute episodes um, and hopefully be able to use some of the community to help build some of the assets so that, you know, just bring some more people to be involved and be a part of it. Um, very heavy on Reillusion, very heavy on Omniverse because that's going to be the main tool to be rendering. Um, going to be using awesome tools such as Aculips, which means that, you know, to do the uh, mouth animation because that's one of the biggest problems with facial motion cap that I find, but that just cleans it up. Oh my goodness, John. Mm. Um, we'll be using, yeah, mocap perception neuron. I mean, I'm very limited in space, as you can see. I would love to have that studio. I just did a quick search. Oh, it was great. That's amazing. Um, but that's the goal is to create a web series this year. So that's great. That's and, awesome. and is that Great. Is that going to be rendered in real time or in path tracing? Or? Probably probably um, path tracing, yeah, to make it look as schmick as possible. Very cool. I can't wait. Uh, so everyone should subscribe to Marco's channel if you haven't already. Uh, I believe you may have put it in the <laughs> chat. Um, okay, so Toby, I see a couple of screens. Uh, did you share the same one twice or or are these two different screens? Uh, no, those are two videos. Uh, you okay. can play either one of those. All right, um, let me try. Let me do the first one. Then. Let me try the first one first. Hopefully the audio works. So give this a go. It's kind of interesting if you start to think back. One of the most interesting things, at least to me, I didn't realize until I was about 13, 14 years old that I lived in a very unique family environment. Uh, my father's actually from North Africa, Algeria, um, and my mother's Puerto Rican. Because of the and growing up old. naturally with... You don't have to listen to the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so, gotcha. Uh, basically what I was looking at is, uh, looking at the result of different methods of generating links in from, uh, audio recording. And so these are different stages in the process. So basically the first one will be, what do you get if you just load the audio file in iClone and put it on, on the timeline? Then the second will be, if you run the Vizim detection using Eclipse and just don't touch anything else. Then the second will be, if you transcribe the wave, I mean, the audio recording with Whisper AI, to get a transcription of the what was said. And the last one would be okay. if you would add the missing parts because Whisper I filters out some um let's say if you talk and you say uh or you know and or you say double N and it will filter those out and then it will no longer match the actual transcription in iClone. So that's with those corrections and then that will be the result. Um yeah. by the way I have to ask is that Sandra Bullock speaking? Sound like Sandra Bullock. No, not I'm aware of. It's a Swiss. I think it's a Swiss or German actress. Yeah, I don't know her name, but it's not definitely not Sandra Bullock. Uh, very cool. And uh, let me see. And then you have a second second test here with a different character. Uh, the same character, just with a few different uh, changes to it. All right. Let me so see if I can, can play, play this that. one. Up is kind of interesting if you start to think back. One of the most interesting things, at least to me, I didn't realize until I was about 13, 14 years old, that I lived in a very unique family environment. 
And so here, the after doing, doing this evaluation, um, the the con the I mean the the result was that audio to face provides a, a better lip sync result than than Acalypse. And so um, the idea was to 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 generate the pipeline, so we can load in you know 100 beautiful wave files and push them through the the process of generating the facial lip sync animation and then bringing it back into another uh, software. And because okay. When I did the test, I noticed that in iClone, the results are a little different than what I saw in audio to face. And so it was a little bit around figuring out I mean, why that is or where's the shortcomings. And so on the left, you would see the rendered video from Omniverse. In the middle would be a custom Python uh, JSON parser that I wrote that loads in the JSON data export, applies it to the blend shapes. And then on the right will be what iClone is doing after you import. Uh, the JSON file. And so this is also used to have, evaluate uh, if there's anything missing or there's something wrong, or maybe there's something wrong with my script, um, just to to analyze that. Very cool. And uh, how long have you been working with Reillusion for? Uh, I've been using it, I think, since version 7, but on and off. Um, yeah. Very cool. Well, it's, it's, thank you for sharing. It's, it's really cool to see your, uh, uh, your test here. Um, and I'm glad you got permission to show and tell here. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we got a great question from Create the Imaginable. Let me see. I'll put it on the screen here. Is USD scale supported? It will be supported in the future. Apple Vision Pro developer here, and I'm planning for the future. Mm. Yes. So uh, interoperability with, with our USD is highly important. Um, so I think that within you know the coming... Yeah, you know, roadmap. It's it's something that is explorable. It's within where we're where we're gonna be. So I think you're 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 thinking like we are. So <laughs> it's the best I can say right now. So you know, give us time to wrap into that. But certainly, um, you know, the being part of the Metaverse Standards Forum, um, being part of the the character interoperability and you know, USD and GLTF. Uh, interoperability is important, you know, to understand what's happening and what, you know, so we're looking at every angle and uh, thank you for voicing it again. We need more of that. Great question. And uh, feel free to keep your comments and questions flowing on the chat. Um, if you have any questions for your illusion or anyone on the Omniverse team, Richard, have you seen a lot of, uh, a lot of posts on people using uh religion stuff on the forum? You probably haven't seen anything on CrowdSim yet. Have you? Not specifically in Crowdsim. I know that Picavaris, I, I follow his work a lot on the forums because um, he's he asks a lot of questions, which is great, and he <laughs> wants to get the best possible He's all over the place. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, and so I, I've seen the iterations of that video we saw. Um, I think he calls it, like it's, it's like a Neo Tokyo kind of thing, um, which is great work. And, yeah, I've seen the variations go, and he's been working on, fixing problems with, you know, maybe it could be hair or skin shaders or, or the neon light. So yeah, as it's good to good to see that evolve. And obviously that has a ton of people in it. So I mean that's really yeah. um that's really the most people I've seen, you know, except if it was some kind of huge VFX shot, you know. Um yeah. the biggest the bit you know just FYI the biggest crowd some I've ever heard of. I'm a big guy that follows the movies, you know, and I always I was I'm one of those guys that always watches the movies. And then goes back and does the Blu-ray extras and figures out how everything's yeah. done. Um, and the biggest crowd from I've ever seen, I think, is the one for Bohemian Rhapsody when they did oh, the, right. they did the Queen story and they had um, to recreate Wembley live. And it was something like a million and a half people. Wow! Yeah. I gotta yeah. watch yeah. that. If you haven't if you haven't seen the breakdown of how they did the crowd sim for that, that I don't know what that was done with, but that's the biggest digital crowd I think ever in the history of of film. The, the, the recreation of of uh, Live Aid. Yeah, you know, the that actual, actually, the okay, actual yeah. actors that were grouped up around the stage was so small in comparison to how many they generated. It was impressive. Did John, as, it just uh, made me think of it. That would be a cool contest, actually, to see how many you can uh, get going in a cool, realistic scene. Do you guys ever have <laughs> a whole contest of Real Illusion? We do. We love doing contests. Do you have something um, going on now? Huh? You have anything going on right now or coming up? 
Um, so uh, we do an annual character contest. We also do an annual uh, 2D animation called a Animation at Work. That's a really quirky, cool 2D animation contest. Um, and uh, and then also um, our ears are wide open for pitch and produce projects as well. So if you have a passion project that um, is something you want to deploy and have a pi an idea for your pipeline and maybe uh, some development, then there's an open area for that that's always there for folks to let a committee take a look and, and see if, you know, there's an opportunity. So, um, yeah, there's, there's always good stuff. We got a question. Oh, go ahead. Um, I know this isn't part of crowds. Do you guys, is there any way to do like vehicles or carts? So if somebody's pushing an object or like trying to do some, like the city block with just a few cars, is that mm -hmm. possible? I think it is in, in, so there will be motion interaction with props that will be part of the crowd sim. And then you also for, um, for certain motions, you can, like, if you have something custom, like I need a hand being here and here, you know, we're moving a refrigerator down the street or whatever is happening. Um, then you'll be able to do certainly you can use reach targets to keep things where they need to be and then you can blend that motion to split it between uh upper body torso and 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 what's happening with the legs so if they need to be walking and doing something with their hands and holding it differently you can offset all of that and that i mean that's just further part of the character and crowd authoring that you'll be able to do it's not just like crowd in a can where everybody gets the same thing. So, yeah. Very cool. And I was going to mention uh, uh, Ordinary Allen as a follow up to uh, that earlier question. He says Converting FBX to USD scale animation is certainly possible, even if not in Real Illusion directly yet. I wrote a version in JavaScript and there are other tools around. Ordinary Allen actually, uh, so hi, hi, Alan. It's great to see you here. He's a very active member of the Discord server, super uh, responsive and helpful to awesome. other people posting. So, Feel free to uh, to check out him on the Omnivore Discord server. Um, very cool stuff. I think um, yeah, I think we're uh, we have a few minutes left to go. If anyone has any questions or comments, um, but I did want to actually circle back to you, uh, Mr. Scott, because you've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, can you share uh, what's what's uh, what we can look forward to, or is it still a little bit? Uh, yeah, let me. I, yeah, we can. <laughs> most of us top secret. Um, it's, well, it's under non-disclosure. So most of our stuff moving forward is we're we're trying to make Omniverse as easy and and approachable to other people. Because like right now, Omniverse is you know in its essential is a development platform. And so when you bring artists over, you're trying to do things like we're trying to bring over a tool that brings digital twins as a single product. Um, and then like now talking with John with Reillusion, it's like, great, we need that too. Cause like for all the digital twins moving forward for the future, it's like, I need a, I need a way to, and like, let's get one thing straight. Data scientists are crazy smart, but they have never touched an animation tool. Like they don't know what a walk cycle is. They don't know like frame counts, like, it, and, but they're, but it's not, it's not for them to know. Right. And right. so it's for us to come up with the tools that like make something. It's like, Hey, you have a factory. Here are these people. And they're like, you know, they want, um, so we're, we have a digital twin product coming out in about a month. It'll be officially launched at GTC. But we'll, right. we'll announce everything that we're doing. And then as our company, we have our own asset store coming out, which is going to be crazy cheap for the community. Um, and it's just going to be like NVIDIA's asset store, but it's going to be commercially available. Use it all you want. We're going to like, I wanted to build something for myself, which is like, Hey, I just need a whole bunch of stuff. Like I need this and this and this. And then I tried to like, you know, you have to go so many so far to do it. So I've got Markov. He's bringing all his stuff over. Congratulations. I just told you, or, you know, thanks for that. Thank you. And then, um, <laughs> And then we've got our team of 3D artists. And then one of the things that we're doing differently because we want the community is when you have projects, you, you can also just like Reillusion is like, just tell us what you're doing. You can even pay us to go do some of your stuff. And then it just goes to the asset store because like we're trying to build a, a tool set that we can all use. Uh, I do, we do tons and tons of architectural and digital twins. So, so having things like we stopped doing people because I did a, I did a building for where the 
where people who like m- many artists who have Grammys go to this place to record. And I put business ish people onto this building and they were like, all these people are wrong. I need them to have to be looking like they're having more fun. And this isn't for Miami. So you need to change all of this. And then I was like, I'm just going to delete them all. Like I can't deal with this. Um, so I'm happy with Reillusion having their entire asset store, but um, yeah, it, that one client broke my soul by putting <laughs> business people onto a building that makes music, but it wasn't like they weren't hip enough. So I'm excited. <laughs> That's I great. think we can I all relate. Story. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, that's, it's, that's the problem with people that if you don't get it right, it's just another thing to go wrong, you know. And yeah, and there's nothing worse yeah, than trying we, to sell a billion dollar hotel, and all they care about is the the lady with the dog. And you're like, get rid oh, of. Oh, it's the it was the kid for yeah. us. It was the guy with the kid, and I was like, okay, okay, they just don't like kids. I'm just kidding. They did, but it was just like, it was just like, oh, come on. Okay. Okay. But you know, with tools like Reillusion, that stuff is, you know, it should be easy. And then like with like the asset stores, like maybe we come up with our own where we just like reconfigure the people. It's like, Hey, this is high end business or this is high end casual. Um, you know, something that matches the architect like world, which is like, oh, okay, this is how I'm doing this. And then, you know, so I'll get with John probably about what I need a breakdown for, but like, that's what I'm excited for is bringing is having these complex tools so easy for people to use. Fantastic. We'll do that. That's, that's awesome. Uh, speaking of easy tools uh, that is uh, really accessible to people, we've got a, a really Vince, Vince probably knows about this one too, actually. There's a big announcement over at CES with the RTX remix team. Uh, they're launching their open beta uh, on Monday, the 22nd, uh, and we're going to have the RTX Remix team here on this live stream next Wednesday, including my old partner in crime, Wendy Graham, who is now a, a producer for uh, for that team. So really excited for that one. Um, but uh, Vince, what can you share about RTX Remix? You know a little bit about it. it yeah, RTX Remix is just phenomenal it's it's amazing what it does so it can it basically if you you take a, a regular video game <laughs> that's direct x i think it's direct x9 i'm not sure about 10 but not the not the latest uh, 12 so it has to be an older game and um when the game loads uh we can intercept basically the 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 data the lo- the level suck that entire level into omniverse and then you have the breadth of omniverse tools or rtx remix which is built on omniverse then you have all these tools to do AI up res on the materials to you can connect to Blender, Max, My, whatever you want to remodel uh, items. You can swap elements out. Um, I highly recommend the uh, the Skyrim video. The one that's in the middle is really, really cool. And um, and uh, you do all these enhancements to it, basically, and uh, and change out the lights because now you have ray tracing and um, and you can save that as a mod pack. So then when you run the game, it basically kind of almost, you know, get gets transferred into the Omniverse pipe, and then you get. So this is kind of the before, right, of Morrowind. Um, this is the before. This is what it looked like, and then you get this RTX on version, right? You're getting the the RTX ray traced uh, environment version of it. So it basically kind of wedges itself right inside that game. So instead of running the game as is, it it kind of goes through the second path of of, of swapping out the graphics for for rtx remix it's just phenomenal and then you get all these tools right and then you got the great ecosystem you want to swap out characters i would assume you could bring in characters from from reillusion as well like you're able to update um items and objects and lighting and everything it's just it's just magic what it does so we've seen some of the um, quake games um i think it's now released or about to be released or early access release but uh, i guess we'll know next week <laughs> and uh um it's uh it's really cool it allows developers to make essentially a complete revamp of the graphics of of their game and we have a nice <laughs> nice comment from ashley who i see is joining in the in the chat uh sims 2 that's, too. Too that's a great request <laughs> <laughs> yeah. actually 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 it's kicking off her, her live stream series in 2024 is kicking off uh with michael wagner actually who just wrote an amazing article on uh, getting the MetaQuest uh, to work, the latest MetaQuest to work with Omniverse. Uh, so Michael Wagner will be her guest on her next live stream. We'll put the, uh, the link up in the chat. Uh, but uh, on Monday, there you go. 
Monday. Uh, it's on our ad event. We'll put a link there so you can add to your calendar, but that should be awesome. Uh, Michael Wagner is another uh, another ambassador. Very cool stuff. So yeah, so next week we're going to have the team on, and uh, and we will um, we'll we'll kind of go over everything, and they're going to do a demo um, uh, showing how the process kind of works. Um, and yeah, as she half said, it's team, really meant for. Yeah. Uh, and as I think Vince had mentioned earlier, he saw on the, the screen more meant for classic games uh, to bring classic games yeah. back. Um, okay, cool. So uh, I think we're, we're just about out of time now. I want to, uh, I want to give a, a very special thanks to John Martin here. Uh, John, you, it's always a huge pleasure and honor to, uh, to have you on the stream. Thank you so much for making the time. Um, we are such big fans, not only at NVIDIA, but in the community overall of what Real Illusion brings to the table for users. Uh, like Chris and others have said, uh, it basically just makes things so much more accessible um, and, um, and, and affordable to be able to do things on really large scales that really weren't possible uh, by one person just a short time ago. So pretty amazing stuff. Uh, Vincent, I can't tell you how awesome it is to have you on the stream again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I didn't waste all those all that time learning how to animate characters and do crowds. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. awesome. Um, Chris got really excited uh, to have you join us today, and uh, uh, really pumped for GTC. Uh, excited to see you there in person, but also congratulations as you got near your launch. Uh, we'll be definitely excited to share the news with the community on that. Marco, your web series. Uh, count me in. Uh, if, if you need any uh, any models, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll I'll see if I can do something for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I think I'm a good fit to replace the uh, the skeleton guy you have. The, the um, oh the uh, lich. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's no. He's a classic. A similar resemblance to that character. Uh, Toby, <laughs> really really awesome to have you join uh, join us today, and and thank you for being part of the community and sharing your experience with uh, Real Illusion and. And your test and thank your your uh, your client for us for letting uh you show and tell and uh, i'll follow up with you afterwards but uh i'll send you a questionnaire but we can highlight your work in a future blog i think that would be really neat um and richard yeah, thank you so much pleasure. For, thank you thank you and how can people uh, get in touch with you or look up your stuff is it just quantum stage effects the website uh you should if you find it if you google quantum stage uh mocap you should find it should be the first result hopefully <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And Richard, thanks again for, for jumping on, being my partner here. Uh, we'll see everybody next week with the RTX Remix team. But don't forget to check in on Ashley's live stream on Monday with Michael Wagner. That's going to be a really great one for any kind of uh, anybody doing AR, VR work. Um, until then, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Bye.